We are in Texas. We're starting out in Houston, heading on to San Antonio, exploring wine country, and then finishing up in Austin. We are here in Houston. We're only here for 24 hours and we're going to do a bit of a food tour. We have some barbecue spots that we wanna hit up and we wanna try some local favorites. So just a quick trip here in Houston. We're gonna eat some delicious food. Thanks for joining us. Our first stop here in Houston is Pinkerton's Barbecue. We're walking up now, we can already smell it. If you can smell your food as you're walking up, I think it's gonna be a pretty good time. This place is pretty busy today, so that's usually a good sign. We're very excited to be down here in Texas to eat some barbecue. So today we have a beautiful sliced brisket. We have candied pork ribs that just, the color on here is amazing. We And as a side, we have jambalaya and a little bit of bacon, mac and cheese. Everything looks amazing, smells amazing. Um, I think I'm gonna go for one of these candied ribs because that sounds good. Go for it. Wow, the flavor on here is amazing. It is sweet, but it's not too sweet. So I understand the, why they're called candy ribs. But, mm, pulls right off the bone. We're really cooked. This is not my first time in Texas, but this is my first time in Texas for barbecue. Perfect way to start. I'm gonna try for more. It's finger looking good. There's a reason there's a big smile on my face, and that's because I'm in Texas eating barbecue, and look at how beautiful this is. I mean, look at this. Look at this brisket. It's more like a piece of art. And we actually got kind of the ends of it as well. And we're just gonna take a nice big chunk. It's just different. If you're not in Texas, you, you just don't find brisket like this. I mean, it's just, if you look at the smoke ring on there, that smoke ring is low and slow, and that's the only way you can get it. They know how to do it right down here in Texas. Ah, oh, it's just beautiful. My first bite of Texas brisket. You know, we eat a lot of barbecue, and Adam is always talking about how this is the best barbecue outside of Texas at these certain places. So now I'm here in Texas eating the brisket. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. It just melts in your mouth. The bark. Adam was talking about the smoke ring. I mean, it's, it's no surprise. They know exactly what they're doing down here. Wow. At the different barbecue spots we go to here in Texas, we're gonna try and find unique different sides. And this is a jambalaya that has smoked duck and sausage in it. And we're definitely gonna get some sausage links, but we didn't get that here at Pinkerton's. But uh, let's go. First bite here of jambalaya. Really smoky flavor, a lot of flavor, rich flavor. I mean, I think it would be a crime to come here and not get brisket or ribs, but you know, if you wanted to come here and get a beer and just have a little bit of jambalaya, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend against it. So this is Pinkerton's barbecue sauce. It's an all-purpose barbecue sauce. We're gonna put it on the candied rib. Madeline really liked the candied ribs. Um, 
you're gonna get that kind of caramelized sauce on there. But I think their um, barbecue sauce is a mustard-based sauce. And I tried it on the brisket, it's quite good, so here we go. Really good rib, it's, uh, when you bite into a rib, you don't want to have it all fall off the bone. You want it to pull away very easily. You want to be able to see where you bit into it. That's exactly what, that's exactly what you got here in this room. Um, both the brisket here and the ribs, if I had to give them a score in a uh, barbecue competition, they'd probably be winning that competition. A tremendous way to start here in Houston and in Texas. Pinkerton's barbecue, just, I mean, of the highest quality. The brisket was great, the pork ribs are great, the sides are great. In fact, one of the things we're gonna try and do is find really unique sides all across Texas. So that smoked duck jambalaya, that's a good start for that. Like Adam said, Pinkerton's was a great first stop to kick off our Texas barbecue tour. I'm excited to eat a bunch more barbecue because that was delicious and I know it's just gonna keep getting better. We decided to stop in at Buffalo Bayou Brewing Company. We're here on their rooftop deck for a couple of drinks, some football, and an incredible view of downtown Houston. Tonight we are heading in to Ninfa's for a little bit of Tex-Mex. We're supposed to have great fajitas, we're gonna have some margaritas and enjoy our evening here in Houston. Our fajitas have arrived at Minfa's and we got them topped with bacon and cheese. We've got all our all here. Now you can hear them sizzling. We have to let them uh, settle down before we can eat them. Minfa's claims to be the originator of the fajita and we're gonna build our fajita here. We've got the mixed fajita. We got chicken and steak. Looks absolutely beautiful. Technically we have uh, three meats on here because we have bacon as well. And this is classic classic Tex-Mex. We wanted to take it a little bit easier tonight. I don't know if we accomplished that. This food is piping hot and it smells amazing. We're gonna go a little bit of guac, a little bit of some cream, and some pico. The salsas they bring you for the chips are very, very good. This green one especially. There we go. These fajitas are really good. The meat is all really well seasoned. It's cooked perfectly. The tortilla is also homemade and it's really fluffy. And when you get that salsa, sour cream, guacamole working with it, that's a pretty good fajita right there. Yeah, in particular, it looks amazing. Love the cheese on top, crunchiness from the bacon, a little bit of heat from the peppers, and all these fresh ingredients on top. And really, this tortilla is pretty incredible, too. We just finished up here at Ninfa's, or Ninfa's, it's probably Ninfa's. We just finished up and it was absolutely delicious. 
fajitas, knocked it out of the park, and was another great stop here in Houston. Right now I am standing outside of our next barbecue stop and that is the pit room. So you can see behind me, they have a cow um, that has a pig standing on top of it, that has a chicken standing on top of it. And I think that's some sort of Illuminati symbol. That's one of the best paintings I've ever seen outside a barbecue spot, but uh, we're looking forward to going in. It's our second barbecue stop in Houston and I think we picked a good one. We've gotten our barbecue here at the pit room. It's classic Texas style. You walk up, they chop it right in front of you. We got a three meat plate, so we kind of got a sampler. We got their brisket. We got the sausage. I asked the guy who works here, what's your favorite sausage? He said jalapeno cheddar, so that's the one we went with. One of the fun things about this place is they have a condiment bar. They have their pickles, they have their jalapenos, they have carrots, pickled red onions. And so we kind of got a smorgasbord of that too as well. I don't want to talk any longer. I want to dig into barbecue, so let's go. All right, first bite of brisket here at the pit room. This brisket is super tender. It falls apart in your mouth. When they were cutting it, th there was no effort. He was just like chop, 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 chop. And they're going clean slices. It's one of the most tender pieces of brisket I've ever had. Going in on the link here. Full of flavor nice and smoky they have this window right here when you're walking up you can watch them slice everything up right in front of you mm. Mm. and the brisket as adam said is so incredibly tender they have this bourbon coffee barbecue sauce it's like sweet smoky you can taste the coffee the um the coffee just gives it a earthy like more grounded taste, but there is sweetness from the bourbon coming through too. Mm. Perfect on this brisket here. I haven't tried anything like that before. Well, before we dig into this giant pork rib here, um, we're gonna go ahead and try the sides. We got potato salad. I, some people argue with me, but I think a good barbecue spot also does amazing sides because that means they're putting effort into every single thing they do. And that's what you want out of a restaurant. And so a lot of the places we visit and we put up our channel, they always have amazing sides as well. And so that's why we like to try so many of them. And that's just a good potato salad. The one I was really excited about was a Lotz. We got it topped with cheese. Those are good. They're they're smokier than a Lotz, I think, that I've had before. They're really good. I'm gonna go in here on this big giant rib. We've got some of the coffee bourbon barbecue on here. Wow, this is this is like Fred Flintstone. They have a beef rib that's actually bigger. I don't think I've ever eaten a beef rib. You keep bringing them up. You can't get the beef rib with the the three meats. So. Oh, okay. So apparently there's a beef rib that is even bigger than this. Barely made a dent in that rib there. <laughs> that was very, very good. Pulls apart easily. Mm. Holds up well. Sauce is great. Another delicious rib here in Houston. Ooh, that bark is good too. I'm really liking their sauce. A great stop here at the pit room. More delicious brisket, ribs, awesome sides. Now we are going to head out and keep this barbecue tour rolling. We are on our way to San Antonio next. We are in San Antonio. Thanks for coming along with us as we explore the Alamo City. 
We've got some fun food stops planned. We've got some fun sites to see. We're over here by the Riverwalk right now, heading to our first food location, and that's Pete's Taco House. We just put in our order at Pete's Taco House. It's one of the rare times when Madeline and I have the same exact order. We're getting puffy tacos, one chicken, one beef. We're in San Antonio. It's really the only place they do puffy tacos. Now you might be wondering what a puffy taco is. It's somewhere between a hard taco and a soft taco. It's not a hard shell taco. It's not a soft shell taco. We've never actually had one before, but we're looking forward to trying something new. I think Pete's Taco House is a good place to start our hunt for the best puffy taco in San Antonio. First ever puppy taco, and I gotta say, I was expecting a bit smaller of a taco. This is this is heavy. It's loaded up with chicken, cheese, lettuce, tomato, and uh, it's definitely a different consistency from a hard shell or a soft shell taco. So let's do it. Oh yeah. You can see, you got the, the split in there, so that fry, frying process, it opens it up, and it's just, this is a much bigger taco than I just made. I'm pretty excited for this, I think it's gonna be good. It's soft. <clears throat> It's soft, but there is like a little bit of crunch to it, and it holds up really well. It holds up much better than I had anticipated. I'm liking it so far. That was just a quick pit stop here at Back Unturned Brewing Company. Now we're gonna head back out and explore more San Antonio. We are about to head into the Alamo. You have to reserve your time to enter, but admission is free. We are about to head inside to the historic Alamo. Well, that was the Alamo. Did not find the basement though. Don't know where Pee Wee's bike is. So we're going to head over to Ray's Drive-In, which claims to be the originator of the Puffy Taco. We're here at Ray's, which is the originator of the Puffy Tacos. We got a full plate of Puffy Tacos, four different kinds, chicken, a barbecue, an avocado, and a beef taco. So we're looking forward to those coming out. Well, our puppy tacos have arrived, and as you can see, they, you know, are distinctly different from a hard shell taco or a soft shell taco. They're fried. I don't want to call them a chalupa, but they're relatively similar to a chalupa. This is actually the avocado taco, so meatless. Going in right now. Well, 
love the taco shell. I mean, it is just, it's very unique. The only way to describe it is it's not as hard as a hard shell, not as soft as a soft taco, but it holds up well. It's got a crunch, but again, it's flexible. This taco right here, the barbecue taco. Looks like brisket and uh, just full of flavor. And what a fun way to eat these tacos. I mean, the puppy shells are definitely a unique San Antonio experience. Chicken puppy taco here at Ray's Drive-In. I love that crunch. We finished up our puppy tacos at Ray's. A great example of this San Antonio dish. These are things that we love to travel for. We love to get to a place and just immerse ourselves in the cuisine and try the local favorites. And I just, I'm having fun trying the puppy tacos here in San Antonio. We don't see them anywhere else. And it's just fun to try these local spots that make this dish. And now we're going to head over to a local brewery. We have stopped in here at Kunstler Brewing and I am very excited about what I just ordered. It is the Shrew Farms. It is a Hefeweizen beer with beets. Um, it looks incredible. Um, kind of like uh, that wine that, that glow wine that uh, they serve at Dwight's Christmas. Bears, beets, Battlestar Galactica. Let's try the Shrew Farms. Okay, it um, doesn't really taste like beets. It's like a little bit sweet. A little bit sweet, maybe like a little bit earthy from the beets, but um, very nice. I mean, really, I just think the color is pretty incredible. Well, being that this is a German brewery, I went to Oktoberfest. <sighs> I could drink that all day. That's really, really good. Uh, good find. Love this spot in San Antonio. No one likes Beats Dwight. Why don't you sell something that everyone does like? Like candy. I love a piece of candy right now. So you can actually smell the beet in this. And it's a hint of beet in the beer. The thing about beets though is that you want to put the best beats at the front because those are your money beats and you want to put your best beers at the front because those are your money beers. I don't know if any of that's evil, but... Absolutely loved our stop in the Kunstler Brewery. Um, friendly staff, great beer. If you're in San Antonio, just a little bit south of downtown, well worth the stop. Um, we don't put things in our videos that we don't like, so we always put something in that we recommend, but then sometimes we really, really recommend, and I really, really recommend popping in this brewery. We are at San Antonio Missions National Historic Park. We are going to take a little look around. We always love stopping at places like this and learning a little bit more about the history of the city that we're visiting and the old architecture of places like this is just amazing and coming to a spot like this you can step into history a little bit and get a feel of the old architecture the united states is still such a young country that we don't have a lot of old history so when you get a chance to experience some of it there's just something really cool and special about coming to places like this
so far, it feels like San Antonio is a great city to visit if you have kids because there's so much to explore. There's a lot of history and things to do outdoors. Even here, there's some hiking trails back there. So it just feels like a good spot to take the whole family on vacation. Right now we are heading into the Japanese tea garden at Brackenridge Park. This place is absolutely beautiful. Wow, it's huge. We're gonna take a walk down into the tea garden Absolutely beautiful spot, free admission. They do have a little cafe where you can grab some tea and uh, we're just gonna enjoy this beautiful park. There's beautiful plants everywhere. Just nice little trails for you to take. You can head up all the way up and around. Wow, I am loving this. Oh, and there's some koi. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed this stop at the Japanese Tea Garden. Beautiful spot, beautiful day, great place to take photos and just take a relaxing stroll. We finished up at Brackenridge Park and now we are heading out to lunch because we want to try some more puffy tacos. Well, we have one last stop on our puffy taco tour and that is Rosario's. You'd think we'd be sick of them, but I'm excited to try some more. Well, at Rosario's here, our puffy tacos have arrived. This is puffy taco stop number three. And I have a very, very good feeling about this one. I don't know why. These seem to be the puffiest tacos of the puffy tacos. They're also hot. So we're gonna have to wait until they cool down. This is the beef taco. Put a little extra sour cream on it. Cheese, lettuce, tomatoes. We're just gonna go right into it. So of all the puffy tacos we've had, that is the most in between a hard shell and a soft shell. Some of them lean a little towards crunchier, some of them lean towards a little softer. This one's right in the middle. It's probably a good puppy taco to finish on. What's interesting to me is that all three of them have been different and each restaurant has their own little spin on it. And it's kind of fun to go try a bunch of them. Our final puffy taco here at Rosario's beef taco. It also has some potatoes on it, which uh, I always love potatoes on a taco. Mm. Oh no. That's really good, like Adam said. It is the most exactly in between a hard shell and a soft shell taco. I like this one a lot. We've had some good puffy tacos, but I don't know, Rosario seems to be bringing it for me. There's a lot of good flavor on this taco. And a lot of oil. <laughs> they are oily. 
They come straight out of the fryer. I'd, I'd almost be angry if they weren't. Just finished up here at Rosario's and I'm gonna be honest, I think that was my favorite puffy tacos of all of the ones we've tried while here in San Antonio. If we hit up one of your favorite spots, let us know in the comments below. If there's a spot we missed, let us know that too. And if you've come to any of these spots after watching this video, come back and let us know. Tonight in San Antonio, we're walking along the Riverwalk, which is one of the biggest attractions here in town. And we're heading to dinner at Southerly Fine Dining and Brewery. Well, we've just pinned in our order here at Southerly. They're all about Southern cuisine here. And so we've got a couple dishes that I think uh, you're gonna find on Southern menus. First off, fried chicken. And we're excited about that. It's top of the gravy. And then we also got a cracker crusted redfish. That is stuff of crap. San Antonio is not sitting on the ocean, but it's actually not that far from the Gulf. And Southerly uses Gulf crushed seafood. And that's why we decided to get some fish here. We're also starting off with a pea hummus. It's a field pea hummus. It's top of the view things. And the crackers are fried. They have a really inventive menu and we're looking forward to our food coming out. So on their menu here at Southerly, they have a beer called the Piccadilly. It's infused with pickles and Kool-Aid. I had to try it. It is a nice pink color and it has a salted rim. It's uh, very interesting. <laughs> I'm glad I just got a taster of it, but I had to try it. So this is also a brewery. This is their copper beer. It is very, very good. Our appetizer has just arrived here at Southerly. We got a field pea hummus and it comes with some fried saltines. So let's dig in here. Oh. Oh. The crackers are so crispy. Hummus is delicious. And then it's topped with some I actually am not even sure what this whole <laughs> deliciousness is on top, but there are some red peppers in there. Those are coming through really nicely. Wow. Well, we are starting off here with our red fish fresh from the Gulf and Absolutely beautiful plating. We got a rice pilaf underneath. You can see the crab there. Big, big chunks of crab. And we're gonna get a little bit of crab. It's a lemon verblanc sauce. Crab is awesome. Fish is fresh and just up. Uh, we've been eating a lot of barbecue here in Texas probably good to uh, go a little bit lighter. We have a beautiful plate of fried chicken here. Comes with some gravy. I'm gonna pour a little of that on top. Ooh. Looks amazing, nice and crispy. I'm probably doing this wrong, but let's just go right in. There is no wrong way to eat fried chicken. 
<laughs> Adam says there's no wrong way to eat fried chicken, so. All right. That is the wrong way to eat fried chicken. Well, it might be the wrong way, but it was delicious. Oh my God. This fried chicken is absolutely delicious. It is perfectly seasoned, nice and crunchy. And then the chicken inside is perfectly moist. Ooh, look at all this. It's all just skin right here. I'm gonna eat all of that. And then we have this delicious, delicious gravy on top. It is salty and delicious. I probably look really silly right now, but I don't care. All right, Madeline is raving about this chicken, so here I go. I'm just going all in. I'm not gonna rank fried chicken, but oh, man, that is next level. The gravy also, kind of like that chicken fried chicken. I have gravy and chicken juice all over my face. I care zero. Oh my goodness. I was not expecting it to be that good. Everything here in Southerly was really, really good. Great way to close out here in San Antonio. Maybe one of the best meals we'll have in all of Texas. Today we are in Texas Hill Country. We are out in the vines, exploring vineyards and a couple of other stops all around Fredericksburg. For lunch today, we are heading to Hill and Vine. Their menu looks great, and it looks like a perfect spot to start our day here in Hill Country. Our first dish has arrived here at Hill and Vine. It's a mushroom toast. It's Texas mushrooms with goat cheese on there, a tomato, fresh baked bread. Here we go. That's a good first bite here in Texas wine country. So something really cool about this place is that they have German dishes and they kind of have that wine country feel. So I decided to go for a classic chicken salad sandwich on a croissant with arugula salad. Looks great. There's a green tomato on here. I have the chicken schnitzel dish here at Hill and Vine, and it comes with pesto, mayo, and we're gonna squeeze a little lemon on there. Of course, this is a classic German dish, and with all the German heritage here in Fredericksburg, fits right in with the area. On a nice fall day, it's a pretty good meal. Right here, we have the sweet potato spatzel with bacon and taking a few bites of this dish and it's a perfect pairing with that chicken schnitzel. Again, playing on the German heritage here, but also putting a little Texas twist on it. Well, that was a great lunch stop. Absolutely delicious. Love that sweet potato spetzel. Love a good twist on a classic. And now we are heading out into hill country and we're gonna go explore some vineyards and uh, just have some fun. All right, our next stop here in the hill country is the Allstadt Brewery. Huge, beautiful building. Oh, there's Adam. Beautiful building. We're gonna head in. I think we're gonna have a few German beers. Hill country is wine country, so naturally we are starting off at a brewery.
We're out here on the back patio at Aldstadt. It's absolutely beautiful. Huge patio, huge, beautiful building. We decided to get a flight. We have a lager, a Kolsch, an amber, and a Vienna red. This is a German style brewery. We've got some German style beers, so let's go. The lager. Oh, that's nice. This, this is, as Adam would say, a very easy drinking beer on a beautiful 75 and sunny degree day here in Texas. I'm really looking forward to the darker beers, but I'm gonna keep going down the line. Here we have the Kolsch. Mm, also very good. A little, little more flavor than the lager. And here we have the amber. Beautiful color. Yeah, that's good. Very, very nice flavor. Adam loves amber beers, but he's driving, so more for me. The Vienna Red. I already took a sip of this one. <laughs> Full disclosure, but here's yeah, for the camera. Yeah, that's my favorite one. I am normally, I normally hang out on the lighter side of beers, but this is where I hang out. But this, this Vienna Red, we might have to get a growler of this to go, to bring back to the Airbnb. Vienna waits for me. <laughs> Vienna waits for Adam. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, very good. Like everything I've tried here so far, um, this is a great stop. Like I said, we are in wine country, but we wanted to come to the brewery first. They do also have a restaurant here where they serve German food. We did just eat lunch, so we won't be heading in, but we're gonna check it out. I have to imagine that during Oktoberfest, this place probably gets pretty packed. Great stop here at Altstadt Brewing. Beautiful, beautiful tap room, but we're gonna keep rolling here in Hill Country, and we've got some wineries we wanna check out. We've just been driving in. It is a one-way road and it's just winding in through this field. So um, I'm not really sure what to say about it. We've seen the whole ranch. We've seen like the whole ranch, but we've seen no buildings or really anything. Um, there's some cows roaming, which is cool. And we've seen some deer and some horses, but um, we just keep driving back further and further. So I don't know what the visitor center will be or what the uh what where we're gonna end up but we're gonna just keep driving through this field Drove through the whole ranch to end up here at the Texas White House where they have a presidential airplane. So we're gonna check it out a little bit. Johnson was the first vice president to have an airplane assigned to him. And that is this plane right here. They refer to it as Air Force One and a Half. It uh, was probably pretty impressive at the time, but um, it's a pretty small airplane.
Well, a very nice setting here at the Texas White House. Um, glad we stopped. Always one to check out history. Um, I will say I didn't really do a lot of research for here, so driving around the ranch for like 15 minutes um, was a bit strange, but I think what's most impressive is the setting. It's, it's got a creek right here, and it kind of looks out on that, and uh, I could see how this would be a nice refuge for a busy office. We're here at William Chris Winery. Absolutely beautiful property. This tasting room is gorgeous. You're looking out all these glass windows. You see their vines all out in the back here. It's a, it's a nice setting to have a little Texas red. Well, we've changed locations. We're now outside. There's a little patio out here. We are sitting out among the vines. Very chill. We're here in the middle of the afternoon, so it's not very busy, but very chill atmosphere here. Um, really just a nice view of the vines too. I'm really enjoying Texas wine country so far. I wasn't totally sure what to expect from Texas wine country. We've been to some smaller wine regions before, uh, but really some beautiful properties and fantastic weather. We're finishing up here at William Chris and we're going to head back into Fredericksburg. We have some spots picked out where we want to have some drinks and we want to get dinner. Also really enjoyed the wine here. Again, did not know what to expect from Texas wine and all their wine here is Texas grown and it was very tasty. We are at Bergerie in downtown Fredericksburg. It's a wine bar and we're here for a little wine and a charcuterie board. We saw some that they were making when we walked in. I'm very excited. We got the cheese and charcuterie board. I think it's gonna be the perfect snack for this afternoon. Well, there's nothing we love more than a good charcuterie board and we've got a beautiful one right here. In fact, some of our favorite uh, little items to do at home, such as the Pepidou peppers. God, I hope that's what these are called. I love these. I think charcuterie is a perfect wine country snack. We've sat down for dinner at Prometheus Pizza. It's a pizza spot in a trailer. They do Neapolitan style pizza. And if you've got something on your Texas food bucket list, it should be eating at a trailer outside, whether it's food truck or a food trailer. All over Texas, they serve up amazing food out of food trucks and trailers. And I think we found a good one here tonight. We have got our pizza here at Prometheus Pizza. It looks amazing, it smells amazing. We've got red onions, pepperoni, sausage, bacon, candy. Ham? Yeah, we just have so much. This is their meat, uh, meatzilla pizza. And we're going to, it's also Neapolitan style. Oh boy, that's hot. I'm gonna go with this one. It smells so good. You know, eating pizza is a fun way to end the day, no matter where you are. But in wine country, it's better. This pizza is absolutely packed 
with ingredients. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of flavor. Okay, let's just, let's just go. <laughs> That is so good. Every bite is absolutely packed with flavor. It is dripping. It seems like this is kind of an indulgent way to end the day, but I'm, uh, I'm not complaining about it. While we're here in Fredericksburg, we're staying in a very cute Airbnb. It's part of a complex here. It's called the Gathering Guest Houses. So ours is the barn. It's a very cute um, little white, like kind of tiny house. You walk in, there's a really nice sitting area here. There's a fireplace, TV, and then there is a loft space. You can head up there and there is another bed. There's a, a seating area, uh, seats for, for dinner. And then you head into just a small kitchenette, microwave, mini fridge, um, coffee maker. And then you head into the bedroom, nice big, king size bed, another big TV, and then the bathroom is also very nice. Beautiful uh, stone shower, big jacuzzi tub, nice big vanity here as well. Lots of towels, which is always great when you're staying in an Airbnb. Very cute decor in here. And then you head through the bedroom out onto the patio here where there is a hot tub, there's also a TV. And over this way, we have a seating area. You also get like a fire starter log. So you can sit out here around the fire in the evening. Um, but yes, your own secluded private courtyard and um, very nice spot to sit out in the evening. There are several little Airbnbs in this complex, all very cute. Uh, but yeah, this is the barn. It's been the perfect place as a home base as we've explored Fredericksburg and Hill Country and Wine Country here in Texas. All right, we are here at Eaker's Barbecue in Fredericksburg. We have a delicious looking plate of barbecue here in front of us. The owners uh, do a little bit of Korean fusion in their barbecue. So there's a twist here that we're very excited about. Looking at what we've got, we have some gojujang pork ribs that look absolutely incredible. We've got sliced brisket. We have a jalapeno cheddar link here. Then we've got some kimchi fried rice and a cucumber salad. I, I think I have to begin with one of these gojujang ribs because they look amazing. Oh, it's gonna fall right off the bone. Mm, looks great. Okay. One of our goals on this trip is to mix it up and try some different styles of barbecue. This is absolutely delicious. Amazing flavor, spicy, but a little bit sweet. And the rib is perfectly cooked. It's just falling off the bone here. Mm. Wow. That is some awesome flavor. I think we should have gotten a few more. <laughs> we can go back in. We might have to go back in and get some more. This is really good. All right, here I go. I'm trying this rib. This is a giant rib too. Wow, look at that. Uh, I think I might go on the other side. Mm. Oh yeah. 
you can chop that up, put it on like fried rice, put it in fried rice. Oh man, that's like perfection. That's a good flavor. I mean, this is the thing is, we could go to 50 barbecue spots in Texas and eat pretty much the same brisket, sausage, ribs. Like Madeline said, this is a flavor you're probably not gonna find anywhere in Texas. And uh, it's a good spot right here. Our goal to find different sides at every spot continues here at Eakers. Mm. That is good. Mm. I mean, how do you pass up kimchi fried rice on a barbecue menu? Mm. Mm -hmm. That is very good. Korean cucumber salad. Another side I don't think you're gonna find on many barbecue things. That's very good. Full flavor. Nice and crunchy. Crisp. I feel like it's a really nice departure from like beans and mac and cheese. I could eat that everywhere, but this is full flavor. Mm. All right, we're gonna try the brisket and the sausage here, and we're gonna put their homemade barbecue sauce on both. This is a leaner cut of brisket. A lot of times you see the fatty brisket, so it's kind of that like real big piece. You see a lot of kind of collagens on it. This is a very well done, leaner brisket. Good smoke ring. Good barbecue sauce too. Now, for the sausage. The Scotty Pippen, the brisket's Michael Jordan, here in Texas. It's a jalapeno cheddar sausage. I mean, the sausages are so consistently good everywhere you go in Texas. I think they've, they've really got that one figured out. Another delicious barbecue spot here in Texas. What a gem here in Fredericksburg. I mean, we know Austin's gonna have some great barbecue, but to find a place like this in a small town like this is pretty awesome. We've decided to hit up one more vineyard before we head out of Fredericksburg. That is Barron's Creek Vineyard. Looks like a very nice spot. We are out here on the patio at Barron's Creek. They have a beautiful courtyard here, really, really nice property. And I found that a lot of these vineyards outsource their grapes from other places, and then they come back and make their wine here. They grow a lot of red grapes. We're drinking a white today. Um, very nice. And they just build these beautiful, beautiful properties. Great setting to have just a nice glass of wine and then enjoy the outdoors here in Texas. It's a nice way to spend the afternoon. Barron's Creek was a great final stop here in Fredericksburg. Really enjoyed all of these wineries that we've hit up. Had a great time. We've had a great time exploring this region and we're now going to keep on rolling here in Texas. We're heading on to Austin. We're gonna eat some more barbecue. We are in Austin, Texas. Thanks for coming along with us. We are going to get some barbecue in this town and we are starting at Franklin Barbecue. All right, we're here at Franklin's Barbecue. People in line were saying that the barbecue here is life-changing. I have not had it before, so I am all in. But we got here about... <laughs> Everyone's ready for some barbecue. <laughs> 
We got in line about nine o'clock and uh, they just opened at 11, so everyone's excited. It's kind of a party atmosphere here in line, kind of like a tailgate. Uh, and we're all here for some delicious barbecue. So we got here at nine and apparently the guy first in line got here around 5 a.m. because he wanted to be the first in the door. I'd say that's dedication. Um, we do not normally get up that early, so nine o'clock was about the best we could do. But yeah, people bring chairs, they bring drinks, they open up inside, you can go in, they serve beer and you can drink it while you're waiting in line. And. Um, yeah, you just make friends with people online. We've met people from Australia and all over the country. So they're all here. They're all here to get the life-changing barbecue. Approaching the front of the line. <laughs> you said three quarters? Yeah. Are we doing uh, any ribs? Um, yes. About four ribs. Four And uh, I just want a taste of turkey. Like a slice? Two slices? Yeah, just a slice. And then um, a quarter pound of pulled pork. Three quarters of brisket, four bones, quarter pork, one slice of turkey. Any uh, rib? Uh, Yes, one jalapeno sauce, one jalapeno. Let's do it. The star of the show has arrived here at Franklin's. All our meats, we got the brisket, we got our pulled pork, we got ribs, we got a slice of turkey, we got a sausage link, it's a jalapeno cheddar sausage link, potato salad, coleslaw, some bread if we wanna just make our own sandwich while we go about it. So, here we go. I'm not gonna put any barbecue sauce on this first bite, and it just looks absolutely beautiful. There's a reason people wait in line for many, many hours, and I don't know why I'm waiting any longer. I just, I wanna, I want, I don't wanna make Madeline wait any longer. I just wanna. This is a huge plate of food. We have actually seen trays that were piled much, much higher than this. Um, I'm gonna stop talking, and I'm going to try my first bit of brisket here at Franklin's. Let's cut a little bit off. Ooh. All right, here we are. We've traveled far, we've waited. Here it is. Oh yeah. That is worth the wait. It lives up to the hype. Uh, just based on that first bite. Wow. You know, I have heard about this place for years. Adam has been here before. They come here in the movie Chef, which is one of our favorite movies. 
And honestly, it, it is everything I thought it would be. Wow. Okay, let's try something else. Um, I'm going to try some pulled pork. So tender. So juicy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I have the rib here at Franklin's, and I have sauced it with their espresso barbecue sauce. That's the only barbecue sauce they don't sell, and uh, I've had it before. It's a very interesting barbecue sauce, and it pairs really well with the ribs, in my opinion. Oh, my God. You talk about being able to see where you've been into and have it pull away but not fall off the bone. That is it right there. My goodness. I was only going to get two, but I'm glad we got four ribs. Delicious rib. They're big ribs, too. Okay. I'm going to try the turkey. I feel like whenever I get barbecue, I almost never get the turkey. But I have a feeling this is going to be very good. There is a turkey shortage going on right now. Probably because they got it all here. That's very good. Again, very tender. I think sometimes when you smoke turkey, it can be dry. I didn't think that was going to be an issue here. There was a guy who was waiting in line just for a turkey sandwich, and everyone else was like, you need to get some brisket. So he... He gave in and he got some brisket. Oh, the turkey is very good. Okay, and then we also have a jalapeno cheddar sausage link. Being from Chicago, we love our links. Let's get a good piece here. like a little bit of a snap, but not tough at all. Ooh, very good. Very good flavor. Some of that spice. That good spice coming through from that jalapeno. We've had, we've had a, several jalapeno, uh, cheese and jalapeno sausage links since we've been here in Texas, and this is definitely the best. It's pretty obvious why people wait in line for this food. Well, we have eaten delicious barbecue here in Austin. And now, because we love Capitol buildings, we are heading over to the Texas Capitol. We visit a lot of Capitol buildings when we're road tripping like this. And I have to say, almost every time we visit one, they just happen to be under construction. I guess we just have bad timing or something. But yeah, there's always some rehabilitation going on. Well, we are currently inside the Texas Capitol. This is the extension area. Uh, it's one of the lower levels. We're just walking around. But the rotunda, when you enter, is absolutely beautiful. Very reminiscent of the U.S. Capitol. But uh, very beautiful building. We're going to continue checking it out.
Well, that was a very cool stop walking around inside the Texas Capitol building. Um, really beautiful. We were talking about like the attention to detail. There are so many stars in all of the um, decorations. Is that the, is that the right word? All the designs? There are just stars everywhere. Door handles, lights, all over the place. Very, very detailed building. And one thing we were talking about is how, how modern the Austin skyline is. You know, this city has really just blown up in the last 15, 20 years. And from pretty much anywhere you're at, you can see that dome. So they've done a really good job integrating the new city into the history and uh, the capital. It's very cool. Very beautiful red granite building too. Um, yeah, very enjoyable stop. But now we're gonna keep exploring here in Austin and uh, go find some more fun things to do. We're at Valentina's. It's a Tex-Mex style barbecue spot. It's family run. And they have some of the best brisket in the Austin area. We're excited to get it. We got a quarter pound of brisket, a couple ribs, and then we also got two tacos in that true Tex-Mex spirit. Um, we got a smoked brisket taco and a smoked carnitas taco. And then we also got their smoked corn. So we got a bunch of food coming out and we're looking forward to eating it all. Well, the food has arrived at Valentina's. It looks absolutely incredible. I mean, you take a look at these ribs and this brisket. They're giant, giant ribs. You can just see the smoke on them. We've got our moist brisket, more fatty one. They've got homemade tortillas. And right here, two delicious tacos, the brisket and carnitas. These are giant tacos. I guess I should have known uh, they were a little bit more on the expensive side, but man, the food looks great. I'm gonna have to open up a, a second stomach like a cow. Strangely, I'm going to go in for the corn first. Mm. So well seasoned. It's definitely not sweet corn. Um, it's um, I think kind of a cayenne seasoning on that. That crema is really nice and that's a good side. All right, here we go. Brisket. Not gonna put any sauce on it. Just gonna go into it. So moist, so tender. That's that fatty brisket, and you can see the smoke ring. Um, I'm gonna put a little barbecue sauce on it this time. That's the kind of brisket you come to Texas for. These tacos are huge. They look incredible. We're gonna get a little lime on both of them here. I'm gonna start with the brisket taco. It has guacamole and salsa on there. There is, there is some weight to this. Wow, that is a huge portion of brisket. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're really trying not to over order at uh, these spots we're visiting and we, we just failing. haven't been able to achieve that. All right. I absolutely love chopped brisket. It is so tender, so juicy. It has very, very well seasoned. Then you have the salsa and the guacamole, just bringing it all together. Very simple, but very, very good. Also, this is a fantastic tortilla. Wow. The smoked carnitas. We've got onions, green salsa, and uh, cilantro on top. Also, looks fantastic. Piled high with meat. Hoo wee Cooked perfectly. The meat is so tender and juicy. A little bit of sweetness, I think, coming in from the onions. Mm. Here we go, Ribbit Valentino's covering their barbecue sauce. I always say, you should be able to bite into the rib, have the meat pulled back, but not fall off the bone. Perfect. Perfectly cooked rib.
Well, we are sitting outside here at Hold Out Brewing Company. We've got a November Fest. And this is their house beer. The description is, what do you have that's light? So we couldn't pass that up. That was pretty funny. It's, it's about six o'clock and it is 80 degrees and we're just really enjoying being outside, enjoying this beautiful Austin weather. And uh, another great spot to just hang out and have a drink. We are here tonight on the Congress Avenue Bridge to see the famous Austin Bats. It is a beautiful night, beautiful sunset. City looks amazing. And uh, hopefully we see some bats. Well, we're at Austin Beer Garden and Brewing Company having a couple beers. It's one of the kid-friendly beer gardens here in the Austin area. Of course, we have Evie with us. They've got live music starting at uh, eight o'clock. So hitting up a brewery, hitting up live music. It's kind of what you do here. We are ending our night in Austin here at Gordo's Big Fat Donuts, and that is exactly what we have here. We ordered the Naughty and Nice. It says it's the donut that started it all. It's covered in cinnamon sugar, and then we have a side of honey butter. It came with three donut holes, but two of those have already disappeared. But, uh, but let's go in on this big fat donut. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna tear a piece off. Look at how fluffy and soft that is on the inside. Okay. It feels very decadent to dip this into this honey butter, but we're gonna do it because oh. it, is, it is the way, it is the way it's intended to be eaten. It is warm, it is soft on the inside. It is so crunchy on the outside. Loving that cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna go for a double dip on the honey butter. Makes me feel a little naughty. Hence the name, naughty and nice. Yeah, that is, that is super tasty. This is definitely a great dessert spot. I don't think you should start your day with these donuts. <laughs> this is the blackout it's a chocolate donut covered in chocolate sauce with chocolate brownie bites looks absolutely amazing you have to eat this donut with a fork and knife there's really no other way it is messy but it is beautiful at the same time It is covered in like delicious hot fudge chocolate sauce. But the donut underneath is still really crunchy. Here's some of the brownie that's just on top here. 
Yeah, it's not crumbled. It's just plain. No. Just kind of like. It was just like little placed. like chopped up brownie. That is very tasty too. <laughs> Adam's been saying that he really wanted a Texas-sized dessert, and I think these donuts qualify. So behind me is a spot called Cosmic. They have coffee and <laughs> drinks. And we're in a food truck park because we're over here getting some barbecue. One last barbecue spot before we head out of Austin at a place called Leroy's and Lewis. It's out of a truck here. The line's already forming this morning. And this is a really cool spot. Lots of people here having drinks and coffee, starting off their weekend. But uh, yeah, another Austin morning, another barbecue spot. We're here in line at Leroy and Lewis. You know, one thing I really respect about barbecue spots is when they say they open at 11, they open at 11 on the dot and not a second earlier. Uh, but they just opened up at 11. See their smoker here behind me and the trucks over there. They have a great looking menu with some items that we have not seen yet. So we are getting pretty excited. You'd think we'd be getting tired of barbecue, but not yet. We have the smoker and here we have the truck. We got in line, I think just after about 10 o'clock and um, it is almost noon now. We are getting closer and the line behind us has just like tripled in size. All right, we have our barbecue here from Leroy and Lewis. Uh, I mean, I feel like we keep topping ourselves here in Texas. We have a bacon rib, we have beef cheek, and we have beef brisket. We've been trying to find menu items that we haven't seen elsewhere in Texas. We found two of those here today, which are the bacon rib and the beef cheek. I'm really having a hard time deciding what we're gonna dig into first. I think it's gonna be the beef cheek because that bacon rib is going to be one heck of a process to eat. So, let's go a little beef cheek right here. We're gonna go one of their barbecue sauces. We go the whole. Beef cheek's a very intense beef flavor. Um, it's seasoned like brisket, but it's uh, more compact. And uh, man, that's very, very good. This is the bacon rib. It really, truly does look like a rib that Fred Flintstone would have. Um, I may have said that before, but I was clearly lying because this is the biggest rib I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I'm just gonna cut a piece off. Oh, it is dripping with flavor. Wow. Um, mm, that is very, very good. Mm. Incredible flavor. Beautiful caramelization on here. Gives it sweet and smoky flavor. Perfectly seasoned, of course. It's like bacon and pork belly in a rib form. Mm. You gotta try it. Here's my first bite of bacon rib. I'm expecting it to taste a lot like pork belly, but admittedly, I've never seen this on a menu before. I don't know what to expect. It's almost like candy in uh, rib form. I mean, it's just... Uh, wow. Totally worth it. Yeah. It's kind of a new barbecue experience for me. And 
gonna love having those. Okay. Another barbecue spot, another beautiful, beautiful brisket here. Oh, it slices so easily. This is the, uh, some of that moist brisket. It's too big of a piece. So tender. That's a delicious bark on here. So we're gonna try their sauce. Another fantastic example of Texas brisket. I just, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to go home after eating all of this. Like I said, we have some good barbecue in Chicago, but we don't know how to do brisket like this. So when they heard we were from Chicago, they gave us some of their jardinero. I'm just gonna try it without anything. Oh, that's good. Nice and fresh. Not too spicy. Mm. That tastes like home. We're making a big dent in this big old rib. Well, we made a bit of a mess here, but well worth it. Some really amazing flavors that we have not had yet here in Texas. If you want to see more from our adventures in Texas, click right here. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.